on Friday mm -hmm. night. There were about a dozen people around the table. I, and these were my niece's friends, not mm -hmm. I didn't know them at all. I met them. But, and they said, uh, and we get to the table, and, it's, and I forgot it was Friday night, and there are two candlesticks. And the guy, the father, the husband of the house says, and Lenny will say, oh, I like the candles. I have one. Like Friday night candles, Shabbat candles for uh, 40 years at least. And I lit them, and I said, Baruch, I told you, no, I had them out, Kalam, I shekhed, I shone them, I missed myself, it's Yvonne, a lot of them, shell, Pesach, and everyone else said, oh, shell, Shabbat, and I said, shell, Shabbat, and shell, Pesach. Where did it come from that I could do that? Yeah. And two days later, I was still nervous. And I had been asked to do that. <laughs> well, and your Hebrew is much better than mine. I remember to get your lapel pen. Oh, yes. But, um, yeah, you know, it's the good thing about the Hebrew blessings in Paris. They all start off the same. <laughs> so once you get into the role of it. <laughs> but I, I, to me, I was shocked that, I mean, I couldn't believe it that I came up with it and did it. But anyone would ask me to. So that was. Thank you for your company. <laughs> yeah, I love. Um, I've always been a cat person, but I was never allowed to have pets as a kid. But in the summertime, we would go to Lake Champlain for the summer in the bungalow colony, and my father would go to the nearby farm and bring me back a kitten or a cat for the summer. I wasn't supposed to let him in the bungalow. But I would do that, shove them under the covers, and my mother would find them and throw them out and have mm. a fit with me. But for doing that, but I, at least for a couple of months, I had a cat, and then I had to give it back. Oh. And that was awful. Mm. So, okay. Pulliam. Pulliam versus yes. Smith. So, that was a custody case. Um, and we. Sharon Thompson argued it at the we had as I said we did not have the case at the trial, which turned out to be pretty awful because it was, uh, it, they had allowed some evidence you know to be given that somehow made it seem bad you know two men uh, raising these children, anyway they they never mentioned. That the, the actually the mother of the kids was divorced and having an, her own affair with a man to whom she was not married, but that didn't matter to them. Anyway, the case went to the Court of Appeals and Sharon argued it and won. And then it went to the Supreme Court and she had never argued in front of the Supreme Court. And I, we had help from the ACLU, of course. Um, in these cases, and we, you know, we had a practice sessions that were, that the ACLU set up so that we could make this argument, and we had, uh, and I got to argue it, and the court was very hostile, and at some point, I remember the uh, chief judge saying something like, "The evidence shows that the." Uh, husband kissed his partner, or I don't know how he described the other man, in front of the boy, in front of the children or something. And I said, it was just a kiss, because the way it was, it was on the way to work, something, and I can say, I said, it just was a kiss on the cheek because he was on his way to work. It was not a, you know, a sex act or something like that. I remember having to make that, stand there making that argument, but... There was no way in the world that court was going to rule in favor of the gay people. There were later days when the court, the Supreme Court of the state was a little more friendly, but not, <laughs> not there at that time. So he lost total custody? He lost custody, yes. And um, it, was, it was very, very sad. Uh, the courts were not as friendly to gays. Uh, I mean, most of the people who were judges were men, and they were straight men, and they did not 
approve of anything that has to do with gay and lesbians. Just one of those. Mm -hmm. But it was the only case I ever lost in front of the state Supreme Court. <laughs> no. And I think if we had had the case from day one, we it might have come out differently because Sharon and I would have known how to how to keep that kind of evidence out and to make and to make sure it was plain. You know, okay, if someone had asked, did you ever see him kiss? I would say, you know, you would get in and question when mm -hmm. your turn came around. Well, was that what kind of was that just a goodbye kiss? That's mm -hmm. you know, try to get that into it, but we. When you don't have a chance to do to present the evidence, and all you can use is what's left, it's it's hard. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about your work with Summit House? Summit House was a wonderful organization, and it started with one place, one house, and the purpose of it was for women with children who had committed a crime and were going to go to jail. Instead of going to jail, they could go and live in Summit House with their children. And they had to work or go to school, and they had to do all the work for the house. I mean, all the women living there they had to do whatever work was needed in the house. And, um, and then they would do this for two or three years until they, quote, graduated. They would have a ceremony. and. Um, get on about their lives. So the children got to be there and the parents. It was a great organization and uh, somebody had recommended me for the board soon after I retired and I got on the board and then at some point the uh, woman, Karen Chapel, who was the director, uh, had worked on, decided to try to expand it and so we had to create uh, a, a, some way of getting a summit house in Charlotte and one in Raleigh, and we had a board to do that. And I chaired that board, that committee. And then we got, uh, we did get a summit house in in Charlotte and in Raleigh. So we, there were three of them, and so we had each lo local board had a, had its own local board, and then we had a statewide board who met regularly and planned the, the rules and changes and all that kind of thing and raised money for it. And that statewide board, Tom Ross, who uh, later became a, an important judge in this country, and then he became head of the um, uh, UNC system. He was head of the UNC system and he was also head of uh, the, that organization. It's a a charitable organization, big one, in headquarters in Winston Salem. Um, anyway, Tom. And I, anyway, he was the first president of that statewide board, and I was the vice president. And, um, so I put in a good eight, ten years on the Summit House stuff uh, because I thought it was a terrific program. It really worked, and instead of those women spending their years in jail and away from their kids. They were with their kids and they got, and I think they got cured in a sense. <laughs> you know, they, they, got, it was, they got trained to be good. But um, unfortunately, the program has disappeared, it's gone. Uh, I guess Karen Chapel was terrific. She was the head of it all. And I hadn't seen her in, oh gosh, no, 10, 15 years, but just a couple of weeks ago, she was in Burlington and um, came to Greensboro and we had lunch together. So, uh, but we, she she had she just kept go, it going. But when she left it and moved on with her life, uh, it never held together anymore. Mm -hmm. It was a fine program. Is there um, anything that we have not covered in the interview you would like to cover? I don't think so. Um, I do. I just do want to say again that the uh, years of since after my full time work, when I only worked with, um, you know, I, I 
I, I wasn't doing it to make a living. Uh, obviously, I wasn't going to make a living uh, just having clients without having an office, a regular office, and being part of everything. But I did, in, and I did one trial for, for a friend, a gay friend who had a, an issue that had nothing to do with being gay and lesbian. And I did that trial and won it, but I just didn't, and won at the Court of Appeals too. But uh, I liked having the ability to help the community by doing documents. I think not enough people knew to do them and they were afraid to go to lawyers and, and say, you know, this is my partner and I want to do a will, you know. They, they, and, so, and so doing that kind of thing and being available was just a real joy to me mm -hmm. for many years. Um, but I, at some point I decided I'd had enough. And I think I was 77 and I, I decided to surrender my license because I didn't mind, it wasn't just paying the dues, <laughs> but you had to have these 12 hours of continuing legal education every year. And that was a pain in the butt, especially if I wasn't practicing much, which at that point I wasn't in my 70s. So I, I surrendered my license. So you have to petition to surrender your license. And I, and so we had a, I had to fill out this form, this petition form, and explain why. And I wrote, because I practiced law for 40 years, and I'm 77 years old, and it's enough already. And that is what I wrote <laughs> in my petition. <laughs> and it was granted. <laughs> so. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us. It's my pleasure. And, uh. Yeah, can I not? And I, you still don't want a cup of coffee or anything?